very first professional session was a jingle in Fort Worth uh, at Sound City. It's a little four-track studio near the river there. And it was some something Dean had arranged. And uh, it was the, that band Roy I was talking about. We did that. And so that was the very first. The first record I played on that I heard on the radio was uh, a thing called uh, What Do You Say to a Naked Lady by Errol Sober. I think it was a local hit around Dallas in the you know, 70s, something like that. And, uh, yeah, that was a big thrill. There was just a tremendous amount of recording going on. Uh, a lot of live TV, and uh, uh, that was before synthesizers, so every TV show had a band, usually a big band. And, uh, you know, records, uh, of course, but uh, it was, uh, there were all different kinds of sessions. A lot of them were strictly reading. You'd go in and just read a chart down. Uh, the Motown, I got to do some Motown stuff for uh, a ranger named Gene Page and, and some others. But Gene had studied James Jamerson to a T, and he'd write out these bass lines that were like Jamerson bass lines. And you had to go and read them. He wanted every 16th note. I was in L.A. nine years, and was kind of planning to move when I could from the beginning. You had to meet people and just, you know, get to know them. And everybody had, you know, most people had stereotypes of a rock and roll guy from California, you know. So, uh, and one of the first people I worked with was Larry London. Larry was a, a big guy and he had this big groove and he just, uh, his presence was as much a part of the the magic as his playing, you know, because he he wouldn't he wouldn't take any crap from anybody. He didn't care who it was, a producer, anybody. One my, one of my favorite stories is he uh, he did a session for uh, Jimmy Bowen, who was who kind of ran Nashville for about ten years, uh, and Bowen was just chewing out the second engineer, you know, just humiliating this kid. And Larry jumps up and said, got in his face, you don't treat people like that, and just scared the hell out of him, really. And uh, and he, uh, you know, he, he probably could have done $40,000 worth of work for that guy a year, and he didn't care, you know. He just, uh, he, wouldn't st he wouldn't stand by and see anybody... Uh, treated badly, which is a real comforting presence a lot of times on sessions. It used to be. We were like instant friends, and uh, he did a, a whole lot to help me get uh, to break in. And I had already worked for Kyle Lenning in, uh, <clears throat> in California and on the England Dan and John Ford Coley stuff, and, uh, and I had worked for David Malloy on Eddie Rabbit, on Suspicions, and... I was it, driving my life, Love Rainy Night, I think, or Driving My Wife Away. I don't remember which one. Driving My Wife Away on a Rainy Night. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, so I had a couple little connections there. And then Jim Ed Norman was uh, already a successful producer here. And he and I had played in the trombone section together at North Texas State. He's another reformed trombone player. You know, everybody's got a different story. My a different path and and a lot of it's just luck you know with me it was just if i hadn't gone to school with dean parks you know i'd who knows i'd be selling insurance someplace maybe who knows but uh, a lot of it's just i one thing i always did was to try to always play with the best musicians i could play with even if it meant taking a pay cut you know uh that I guess uh you know that's that's one one thing that's that's kind of pretty good advice I think you know the first time I heard Jeff I knew I had to work with him you know <laughs> and uh so that's if there's any real general thing about learning how to play it's always well Dean used to say that he he never wanted to be the best guy in the band, you know. He always wanted to be challenged, and that's a pretty good way to look at it. 
as far as learning how to play and, and staying on top of it once you do learn. One shortcoming that I see in most players is time. And uh, uh, that's, you know, that's the thing uh, that, that I see that if one thing separates the pros from guys who can, who have a lot of chops and a lot of knowledge and, and, and a lot of talent, uh, a lot of them just don't, don't put enough emphasis on time and feel. And uh, developing that's, you know, there are various ways to do it, but uh, I guess that's that's probably the the main thing. And most most guys tend to rush, you know, if they're 